Hi. To estimate the cost of equity and cost of capital for a firm, you need a measure of relative risk. That's the way I think about betas. Betas measure relative risk. A stock with a beta 1.5 is one and a half times more risky than the average stock in the market. This webcast, I don't want to go into the insides of betas. Obviously, there's a lot of theory in there. You might agree or disagree with the assumptions. I want to talk about the, the use of betas to come up with the cost of equity. And in particular, I take issue with the way most people estimate betas, which is to run a regression of returns on a stock against returns on a market index and take the slope of the line as the beta. To me, that's asking for trouble. One slice of history, who knows what happens over that slice of history. So I've always been a proponent of what I call bottom-up betas. Sounds fancy, right? But here's what I do. I break a company down into businesses, or actually I let the company tell me what businesses they're in. Then I try to estimate a beta for each business, and I take a weighted average of those betas, with the weights being specified by the values of each of these businesses to the company. Lots of estimation challenges here. How am I going to get the betas for the businesses? How am I going to get the weights? What I'd like to do today is actually take you through the process of estimating bottom-up betas for one company, United Technologies. Why did I pick United Technologies? It's a multi-business company. In fact, it might not be as big as GE, but it is a conglomerate in five different businesses. So here's where I started to get a bottom-up beta for United Technologies. I went to their 10K. And in that 10K, and if you can't find a 10K, go to the annual report and you should get pretty much the same information. They broke themselves down into five divisions. And here are the five divisions of United Technologies. The first is Otis. They make elevators, escalators. So basically, it's a, they've been around a long time. So they're, they're, you know, that's the first division. The second one says climate controls and security. It's primarily air conditioning and heating systems with a little bit of security systems thrown in there. The third is Pratt & Whitney which manufactures uh, aircraft engines, machinery, basically industrial machinery of all types. The fourth is aerospace systems, and United Technology serves both commercial and defense aerospace. And finally, Sikorsky, which manufactures helicopters. So if you leaf through the 10K, and it's a long 10K, it's about 141 pages long, on page 117, you hit a gold mine. That page, which is actually numbered as page 71, don't ask me why, but it's actually the 117th page of the PDF file, gives you a breakdown, or at least gives United Technologies breakdowns of these five divisions. And if you look at that page, they actually give you five different variables relating to these divisions. They give you revenues by division, that's a net sales. They give you operating profits by division. So that's op uh, profits before interest expenses, earnings before interest and taxes. They give you total assets, at least as they see it across the divisions. They give you capital expenditures and depreciation. Now, I have to tell you that for most companies, you will not get this rich in information base. For most companies, you're going to be lucky to get revenues and operating profits. And for many companies, all you're going to get is a revenue breakdown. So the first thing I had to do was decide which of these five dimensions I was going to use to measure the weights for the five businesses. Ultimately, remember, I want values for the businesses, and each of these variables is just a pathway for me to get to value. I'm going to use sales partly because I don't trust accounting profits because that requires allocations across the divisions that I don't see and I don't know what, they, what the allocations are. Total assets might be a competitor to sales. In this case, I chose to go with sales because, again, I'm not sure how old the, these assets are, what's been depreciated, what's not been depreciated. And the capex and depreciation numbers don't help me come up with value. So the net sales is what I'm going to use to estimate the values of these businesses. So my task is laid out for me. I have five businesses. I have to estimate the betas of each of these businesses. Now, there's a long way to do it and a short way to do it. I'm going to take you through the long way of doing it first, and then I'll give you a shortcut to get to the same or, or an equivalent result. In the long way of doing it, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take each business, each in this case, each division. I'm going to try to find publicly traded companies within that business. That requires access to a large database. If you're lucky and you have access to Capital IQ or a Bloomberg terminal, it's easy to do. In fact, I'm going to take you through the Capital IQ process. You could even try Yahoo Finance or Morningstar or one of those one of the less expensive data sets or freer data sets to, uh, to come to the same results. But I'm going to take one division here, the Climate Controls and Security, and take you through the process of coming up with comparable firms on Capital IQ.
So I go on to uh, onto my browser and I get into the Capital IQ website. So you need to log in and and, and for this I'm I'm going to leave that up to you. You need to you get the login and the password to get into Capital IQ. But once you you get into Capital IQ, you'll see the the choices up on top. I'm going to click on screening, and this is the page that's going to open up. I'm going to click on company screening, and I'm going to start my search. Before I get before I get into the industry and the geographical areas, the first thing I'm going to do is pick company type because I need publicly traded companies because I need regression beta. So the, that's the first criteria I'm going to add is company type, and that gives me 60,500 companies. This is a very large database. Second step, I go to industry classifications. And I'll be quite honest, when you first look at these classifications, you might not know where your company goes. You might have to do some exploring before you get there. And I'll confess, I didn't know where the air conditioning and heating went, and I had to do the exploration, and I finally found it. It was under industrials, under capital goods, and under machinery. It took me about 15 minutes to get there, but it was worth the trouble. And if you click on construction and farm equipment, you're not going to find anything. But if you click on industrial machinery, you'll notice that that one of the items that's there is industrial heating, venting, cooling, and air conditioning. Let me click on the plus again, and bingo, I've got my sector, industrial air conditioning and cooling equipment. I'm gonna add that criteria. You'll see the spinning ball, and you'll see the number of firms that pass through. There are 58 companies globally that are in this business. Now, I'd like to keep it isolated to the U.S. at least initially because maybe there are differences between U.S. companies and other, com and, and other global companies. So let me try adding geographic locations. So I'm going to go in and add the U.S. And if I go down and add that criteria, let's see how many companies I get. I have 11 companies. That's a fairly small sample. We can come back to that, though. So let me go back to the top and... And let, let me view the results. Okay. The results basically give me the 11 companies, and I need some data on these companies. If you go to Add, Edit, Display Columns, you see the three criteria already listed there. Here are the other items I need. I first need the market capitalization of each company. So if you don't want to browse through every column, just click in what you want, market capitalization. I'm going to add that to my, actually, I'm going to add that to my display columns. So now I have market capitalization. I also need total debt at these companies. No. There it is, total debt. Lots of different places I can get that. So let me use the total debt off the balance sheet. It should be the same thing. So, no, so I have market cap and total debt. I'd also like to know how much cash these companies have. There's total cash and equivalents from the balance sheet. I'm going to add that on. No. What else? Um, I also like to know sales, total revenue um, from the income statement. I'm going to add that on. That'll help me, for instance, get the enterprise value to sales ratio. So let's step back. I have the market cap, the debt, that'll allow me to get debt to equity ratio. I have the cash, that'll give, tell me how much cash these companies have as a percent of firm value. I have revenues in case I want to compute the enterprise value to sales ratio. The final number I need, of course, is the beta. And I'm going to use a two-year beta, partly because if you go to a five-year beta, you're going to lose more companies. And because you have a larger sample, you can afford to get away with a two-year beta. I'm going to add that to the screen. That's it. Let's update the results. Okay. So you're going to see the display. And if you look at the bottom, you'll basically see all of the numbers down here. And you, if you keep going down towards the bottom of the page, you'll see the companies and you'll see the numbers that we pulled up. Now let's say I, and, and you'll notice that out of the 11 companies, only five had data. That's not enough, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back, and this is one of the nice things about having a data set like, the, like Capital IQ, is you can go back and modify your criteria. I'm going to click on geographic locations, and I'm going to click on everything. So rather than make it just US, remember we said you can compare betas across. Um, I'm going to pick everything, and I'm going to update. There you go. I've got 58 companies now. I think I am okay, so I update the results, and I'm pretty much ready. So I can go down and have 58 companies. Now here's what you need to do next. You need to out output this so you can use it as an Excel spreadsheet. So you click Go. 
and you will effectively get an Excel spreadsheet that contains all of the data that you have for 58 companies. You can then use that spreadsheet to do everything that we did in class, come up with um, an average regression beta or a median regression beta, median debt to equity, median cash as a percent of firm value, median enterprise value to sales ratio. So that's what you need to do. I'm not going to bore you by doing this for all five businesses, but for each of the businesses your company is in, th that's how you can do it the long way, is to come up with the average beta by sector by pulling up comparable firms and working to a beta for each business. So remember, once you get the betas for the sector, you're going to unlever the beta first using the debt to equity. Then you're going to clean up for cash. You're going to take out the effect of cash, which is going to give you a beta for the business, a pure play beta. And the last step in the process is you need weights for the businesses. Now, here's what I'm going to do to kind of give you the shortcut. I have a spreadsheet that I have that I'm going to attach to this webcast that's on my website as well. And here's what the spreadsheet does. I have industry averages I've already computed for very broad classes of business. So this breakdown is not going to give you the fine level of detail you got on Capital IQ, but it pretty much serves the purpose for most companies. So this is my the data set I have on my website that lists by business for U.S. companies. What the average beta is, what the average unlevered beta is, what the average unlevered beta corrected for cash is, and what the EV to sales is. I have similar data sets for global companies, European companies, emerging market companies on my website. So feel free to use any of them. In this particular spreadsheet, I've actually built in a table for me to use to come up with the unlevered beta for United Technologies. So here's what I did. I took each of the five divisions, so I took Otis, and I put it into a business. So if you look at there's a, the, the, so if you go down, I give you the choice of business. I picked engineering and construction because it's the closest I could get. With broad categorizations of industry, you have to pick something that fits. I took the, um, the, the, the air conditioning, heating systems, and security and put it into building materials because when you're building new houses, new commercial sites, you're going to put that in. Uh, I put Pratt & Whitney into machinery. I put uh, UTC Aerospace into Aerospace and Defense, and I put Sikorsky into Air Transport. It might not always fit perfectly, but I had to make to my choices. I then entered in, if you look at, the, at, the, at my Excel spreadsheet, I just entered the revenues from the most recent year in into the first column. The rest is like magic. It's really not magic, but I'm just using my lookup. So if you look at the green green cells, those are all looked up. So once you've given me your business and your revenues, I go look up the enterprise value to sales ratio for that particular business by, by going to the industry averages. I multiply your revenues by that enterprise value to sales, come up with an estimated value. I use that estimated value to come up with weights, and the weights for the operating businesses obviously have to add up to 100%. I look up the unlevered beta corrected for cash. So we go to the industry average, you see the unlevered beta corrected for cash. That is my pure play beta. I multiply the weight by the beta and bingo, I have a weight or at least a weighted average unlevered beta for the operating businesses. So that's a 1.0911. Now it's true that United Technologies is cash. I got that right off the balance sheet. You can pull that right off the 10, uh, of the 10K as well from the balance sheet. They have debt of 28,221. I've, we haven't talked about lease commitments and how to convert them into debt, but I've essentially built that flexibility in as well. They have about $2.1 billion in debt in lease commitments. Their total market capitalization is $84 billion, and this is the most recent number. And you uh, don't try to be consistent here. You want the most updated numbers you can for each input here. The market capitalization reflects the stock price as of yesterday. The cash, the debt, and the present value of lease commitments might come out of the ra last financial statements, which in this case happen to be pretty recent because it's coming out of the 2012 10K, which is about a month old right now. But that number will get dated as you go through. Nothing you can do about it. Those are, those are numbers coming out of accounting statements. So here's what I do next. I have the unlevered beta for the operating assets. I also compute an unlevered beta for the company. You think, what's the difference? Well, remember, cash has a beta of zero. So this is just a weighted average of the unlevered beta of the operating assets weighted by the, the value I estimated for them plus the cash weighted by zero. So basically the beta that I end up for the company with the cash is lower than the beta that I got for the operating assets. I'm almost home. I use the total debt, which includes the present value of leases, and I divide by the market cap to come up with a debt to equity ratio. That debt to equity ratio is then used to lever up the beta. Okay? 
The marginal tax rate I've used here is 40%. That is actually the tax rate for the U.S. And if you're wondering what to do if you have a company in another country, if you go to the last worksheet, you'll see tax rates by country. I'm a full service operation. What can I say? So that gives me an un a, 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 a levered beta for the operating assets, which takes the unlevered beta and uses the debt to equity. And I also take the unlevered beta for the company and estimate a levered beta. That's pretty much it. So as you can see, this is, um, this is quicker, obviously, using my spreadsheet. But my suggestion is that you try the long way first before you give up. That you try Capital IQ, you have access to Capital IQ, if you have access to Capital IQ, or even Yahoo Finance, to so try to build up to a beta because it's a good exercise in understanding how to come up with an unlevered beta by business and how to build up to a beta for a company. So let's review. The standard approach, you run one regression, you get one beta for the company. With the approach that we've just created, you get a beta for each business and you build up. And it has two advantages. One is not only is the, the bottom-up beta going to be more precise because you're averaging across lots of companies, it's also going to give you a beta by business that you can use to come up with the cost of equity by business. And remember we said that's important when you do, when you do project analysis because to look at a, whether a project is good or bad within a business, you need the beta and cost of equity and cost of capital for that business, and this approach will give you that. I've tried to estimate the value of each business by taking revenues and multiplying by EV by sales. But if you can come up with a different way of estimating value, all the more power to you. Just make sure the weights add up to 100% for the operating assets. Compute two unlevered betas, one for the operating assets, one for the entire company with the cash. Compute two levered betas, one for the just the operating assets, and one, it's confusing with all these betas floating around, but there's a reason we need to cap, keep track of all of these betas as we go through. I hope you found this webcast useful, but take the time out. The best way to learn this process is to do it for your company. Thank you very much for listening.